so you want to convert your unsealed American bottom brackets to sealed bearings on your American bottom bracket. This is how we do it. The number one reason to want to change these unsealed bearings to sealed bearings is this right here. You see that movement? Unsealed bearings never stay tight. This feels tight. It's not tight. You adjust it, it gets loose again. It sucks. So we're going to change these out. Put sealed bearings in it. Now, if you're going to convert these bearings, you got to get a conversion set. This is what I got. There's a part number if you need that. Anyways, mine's for 19 millimeter. You also have to have this shaft right here. Now, I happen to already have one of these shafts, but they do have kits that come with this shaft if you don't have it. Obviously, this shaft is threaded. This shaft is not, so you have to get this shaft. So what it comes with is you got these adapters that allow a mid-size bearing to fit into an American-sized hole. That's why it has this big adapter. All right, let's put it together. All right, the first thing you want to do is remove both of these cranks so you can remove this bolt on both sides and loosen this bolt on both sides. chain off. This one does not have a master link so I have to break the chain. Okay the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this nut off right here which is reverse thread. So I like to stick a crank arm on the other side for leverage. crank set right here this is going away now to get your sprocket off of this shaft stick a crank arm on there for leverage and this thing right here is a nut grab that with a pair of channel locks and this is not reverse thread so this is standard thread so lefty loosey righty tighty So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove these cups right here. These drive out. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a punch and you're going to go inside this frame and hit on this cup right at the end of my finger is. Then you're going to go to the other side and hit on this cup on the inside and drive it out. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a little bit of grease inside this frame. On both sides. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my homemade tool I have, which is a piece of three quarter inch all thread, the three quarter inch nut. Put the bearing on and the center spacer. And we're going to put that in the frame. 
and the other spacer. And as I tighten this nut up, it's going to press these bearings into the frame. Now you can, if you have to, hit these in with a hammer, but I don't like to do that. If you do use a hammer, put a block of wood against this first, and then hit the block of wood. Here's a little bit better angle of what I did. So here's that all thread. I use a washer there to press against the bearing. And as I tighten this down, this nut down, and this nut down, they collapse or they press this bearing into this bottom bracket. Now you can put your smooth bore shaft into it. Put a little bit of grease on it. Sometimes you have to drive these in a little bit with a rubber mallet. Now the kit comes with two different size plastic spacers, and they might be metal, depending on your kit. But the point is, is that one of them is thick, one of them is thin. And the thick one goes on the side without the sprocket, and the thin one goes on the side with the sprocket. And you want to put the taper, like this part, facing out. So that taper, it'll go against the frame. If my finger was a frame, it sits like that. Now we're going to put our sprocket on. Now we're going to put our crank arm on. Make sure that this dowel lines up with one of these holes in this crank. Go ahead and put your bolt in there. You don't have to make it all the way tight at this time. Just get it in there so the crank arm doesn't fall off. All right, put your other crank arm on. Obviously, make sure that you're uh, straight up and down with your other crank arm. Uh, and you can put the bolt back in here as well. Now, after you got all your hardware tight on both crank arms, last thing you want to check is the gap between the frame and the back of this crank arm. And you want to make sure that it's pretty close to the same on both sides. And if it's not, you'll correct that with the spacers. These little spacers right here. Like if this side was too close to the frame, you would add another spacer in here until you get them almost to the same. And that's it. Put your chain back on it. She's ready to ride. Thanks for watching.